All right. So the timeline, when is it going to happen? Now, basically, if, if you look at 1G, sorry, 2G, 2G started in 1985, and it is called IMT 2000. It took 15 years. Okay. 3G, sorry, 2G is, sorry, sorry, I, I may be off by 1G here. No, no. So the 4G actually started in 2000. So this is 3G. 3G started in 1985 and ended in 2000. So it took 15 years. 4G started in 2000 and ended in 2012. So, I mean, basically the vision came out in 3. This is the vision document that we saw a minute ago. There was not the requirement document. So the vision document came out in 2003 and final basically happened in 2012. And now the deployment is going on of the IMT advance. Okay. And so similarly for 5G, the vision document has just come out in 2015 and right, September 2015. Right. And in five years, you will have the final document and the deployment will begin in 2020. Right. So what you have to notice is that the things are getting faster from 15 to 9 to 5. Okay. This is, this is a difficult thing for telecommunication companies to do because they deal with millions of things and they cannot just um, change overnight. So five years is a very short time for them. But they are, um, so so this is what is happening, and then it might be even two years, then we see six years, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, basically the time is getting shorter, the technology is moving fast. And then when we say IMP 2020, that is the day we'll start the deployment. Okay? So by 2020, we'll have the technology, we'll have the equipment, we will be in, 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 in your hand. I mean, in some sense, right? Okay, this is why it's called IMT 2020. Yeah. Huh? What if it is late? Is it late for you? We just finished 4G, man. You just got the 4G from this year. You got the 4G from this year, right? Yes, I just explained that. that it's, it's, yeah, I mean, first of all, to design all this takes a lot of time, and I will go through this, you know, in this. And now, design takes like a five years is very short time for them. I mean, of course, here thing again, you are thinking like a net head. Net, for net heads, every year the technology goes up by factor of two. You know, every two, three years it goes up by factor of ten. Right? So, you don't know it, but we have 100 gigabit you know, in many places in the building, right? So, ten, one to ten to 100, you know, it just takes two, three years. But tell, bell heads, they take time. Okay? Eh? No. Yeah, yeah. So this is not because of because it is infrastructure. The thing is because it is infrastructure, that's why. All right. So now what are they going to change? They are going to change several things. First of all, they're going to change the radio access technology. They are going to get some new spectrum. They're going to change how to share the spectrum with something which they don't own. And they're going to have some new networking technologies, and they will have enhancement to the previous techniques. Okay, so the small cells will become smaller. Self-organizing network we talked about; they will become more self-organizing. Machine type communication we haven't talked about, but that is module 18. Millimeter base we talked about; they will use that. Backhaul will become better. Energy efficiency will become better. So, so what I have done is I have put two things here in gold and blue. Because those are the things that I'm going to talk about in more detail. The rest of it is enhancement. Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. So question is, what is machine type communication? So the module 18 that we skipped was all about machine type communication. Machine type communication simply means means uh, IoT. Okay. So the, just like the, the uh, net heads are working on LoRa WAN and um, A11AH, the bell heads are working on LTE MPC, machine type communication, so that you can use LTE for IoT. Okay? And there's a whole module on it which will come to you if you have time. Okay? Any question about any of this? So the bottom part should be clear to you. I mean, I, I think it will not be worthwhile going through those six things in the bottom. Okay? 
I'll get the new radio technology. And there are so many new words there that have come up since OFDM. So remember, 2G was PDMA, 3G was CDMA, and after 3G they discovered OFDM, so the whole 4G is OFDMA. Now what after that? Right? Can we do something better than this? And this is I am doing this 5G because this is that the best of the world is going to come together. And so yes, there are different technologies that have been proposed and this is a whole list here. Okay? And I will go through as many as we can. Okay? So right now this is just a list. So first of all, what is wrong with OFDM? If you want to improve it, first paragraph you write is that this OFDM is not good. And so here it is, what is not good about OFDM? First is that it's spectrum overflow. So when you send one subcarrier, the subcarrier goes forever. Right? It is not just related to that particular band, I mean a particular frequency, it, it just keeps going, right? The oscillation that you see. And so if you are given um, 20 megahertz, you probably use more than 20 megahertz. If you so basically either use 18 out of 20 and then leave the rest for a little bit overflow or do something, right? So that is one problem. So you need the gas band. You need something which you cannot use at the end. And the entire band should use the same subcarrier spacing. So now here, you cannot have 15 kilohertz between these two and 20 kilohertz between these two and 25 kilohertz between those two. Everybody has to be just exactly 15 kilohertz. Yeah. Okay. So that is a problem. It was never a problem so far, but now it is a problem because we know better. Okay. Second, third thing is entire time should use the same symbol size, entire time. So 1 upon f is the symbol size, remember? So if I give you 15 megahertz, 15 kilohertz, you divide that and you get what is the symbol size. And we use the same symbol size and same size electrics. Everybody has to use. Even if you are very far, even if you are very close, because you are part of the same cell, we have to use the same frequency spacing, same cell size, and everything else, right? And then we all have to be strictly time synchronized because if you transmit the symbol at this time and my time is starts now, you can be transmitting it now, you know. So we have to be very precise in time synchronization. Okay? So so we saw 10 years of OFDM. Now papers after papers are telling what is wrong with OFDM and what can we do. Any question about these four requirements? Uh, four problems, right? So the first solution is to do what they call spectrum filtered OFDM. F OFDM. So actually filtered OFDM. F OFDM. And it's very simple, easy to understand. And the understanding is that instead of using one OFDM over the whole band, why don't we divide the band into subbands? So this is like OFDM over OFDM. So previously we said OFDM is good because we divide the whole band into subcarriers. Now we divide the whole band into subbands, and then we can use different parameters, different frequency spacing, different cell sizes, I mean different symbol sizes, whatever we need. Right? So here I have shown an example where I this is the whole band available to us, but we do three subbands. The red one uses carrier spacing, which is 10 megahertz, and therefore it has some symbol size. And the second one uses 6 megahertz, and therefore it has some different symbol size. And this one uses 15 megahertz, and therefore it has different symbol size. And this is the time axis, this is the frequency axis. So you can see that in the same cell, of the same frequency band, now we are going to have three OFDMA schemes. Now, depending upon where you are located, I can ask you to join the red, blue, or green. Right? And um, so, so now each user will get the right OFDM parameters matched to their noise environment. If they're very far, you know, then they need big symbols, that means they need closer spacing. If they're very close, then they can do, you know, further spelling systems and so on and so forth. So basically, now there is one more thing which is happening is that since these bands are, are independent, they don't want this band to overflow into that one. So if there is, really there is no guard band. 
So what is happening is they put a filter. So this red line here indicates a filter pattern. Everything outside of that is filtered out. Yeah. You need to have filters. Yeah, short filter. I mean, you know, all of these number of filters, right? So this is that's why it's called filtered OFDM. Okay. Now, the band divided into multiple subbands. Each subband we use different OFDM parameter optimized for the application, right? So you can optimize the frequency spacing and cyclic prefix. By the way, you cannot optimize the symbol because if you, as soon as you selected the frequency spacing, you have selected the symbol size. But what you can select is one fourth of that symbol is cyclic prefix, or one eighth of that symbol is cyclic prefix, or one sixty fourth of that is cyclic prefix, depending upon how much delay spread you want to sustain with the reflection. Yes, yeah, is that understand? Okay. So, so you can select the cyclic prefix, you can select the frequency Each spectrum is filtered to avoid inter subband interference. And that is why it's called a spectrum filter. Different users do not need to be time synchronized. So now if you are in this band, blue band, you have nothing to do with the times of the red band. Of course, if you are going to share blue band with that person, then of course you have to be time synchronized, but not everybody in the world. I mean in the cell, not the world. Different users do not need to, so this is called asynchronous or FDM. Asynchronous. The time is not synchronous. That's why. Okay? So this is called FOFDM. Any question about this? For every technique that I'm going to talk about, there are references in the bottom. And um, when the reading list comes, then you will know what else to read. But this is all I'm going to say about this technique. 